All you do is water plants all day. Okay, you guys, so I have the most common assumptions about me in this computer and I'm going to read them and then we're going to clarify some things. So the first one is, you went to university but gave up your career to run your YouTube channel. And I'm very happy that you brought this up because I can tell you this has been an idea that has been in my head for a long time, even before I quit my job, so when I was deciding whether to quit or not, because this was one of my worries, that if I quit that job, I will be giving up my career. And I can tell you um, some of this assumption is true, but I would not agree with the whole assumption and I'm going to explain why. So yes, I did go to university and I studied history. So I have a master's in history, specifically on 20th century European history, focusing on Holocaust studies. So yeah, you would say that it's not <laughs> closely related to plant care. And then I graduated and I got a job at an international organization here in Berlin that was closely related to my field, but not completely related uh, because I studied history. This is more a political organization. So, but yeah, it was a similar field. And then two years ago, I decided to quit my job and start this YouTube channel on plants. Now, um, you would say, okay, Lucia, so then yes, you did keep up your career. But I can tell you that I don't see it that way. In fact, I see it as embracing my career when I quit my job. So as I said, I was studying uh, the Holocaust uh, when I was in university. And one thing that stayed with me was one conversation that I had with to be honest, the best professor I've had in my life. And this conversation was after reading a book uh, on a perpetrator. So the book was an interview with this perpetrator. In this interview, you see that this guy was a normal human being that was just taking steps towards a big atrocity. And he saw them as small steps, but then he, he became what he is now right? A Holocaust perpetrator. So I was talking to my professor and I was telling her, okay, how can I make sure, me, Lucia, not to fall into that so we can prevent uh, this from ever happening again? Because this, this guy was a normal human being and I am, I feel I'm a normal human being. So how can I, how can I prevent myself from falling into that? And she said something to me that I keep with in my heart, in my mind, uh, and I hope I can keep it with me for the rest of my life, which was that it's very important that we are conscious about where we are standing and the people that, are around, that we surround ourselves with and the ideas that we listen to and the words that we use, that we're conscious about uh, where we stand in life and, and that we question where we're standing. So this came to me uh, during my, the time that I was working in this, interna in this international organization. I felt myself that I was not close to the people that I was supposed to be helping. I was really far from them. And I'm not talking about only distance, but also we were not talking to them. Yeah, it was just very far from, from the human being. So I just didn't feel proud about my job. Me personally, of course, I'm not going against the organization. I'm just saying that me personally, I didn't feel proud about what I was doing there. And I questioned where I was standing and I was questioning my actions. So I decided that this was not my path and I wanted to follow another path. So I decided to leave that and come to this path and talk about nature, something that gave me peace and I thought that I could bring that to other people and just embrace that with other people. And I can tell you that, okay, other than bringing many skills that I learned in my career to this channel and to this work that I have now, I would say that the biggest part of Plants in Lucia was that, how it began. And it began with me questioning where I was standing and what I wanted to do with my life and what I wanted to do on this planet. And this was something I think is the most important thing that I learned in my career, to really question where I stand and question my actions. So yeah, I would say that when I did that, I really embraced my career and embraced exactly what, what was important about that and what was important about what I studied. And I hope that I can do that every day and every day of my life. So yeah, so I would say that yes. So yes, you could say that I gave up some parts of my 
my career, but I think that I embraced the most important part of it. <laughs> okay, so number two it says you work as a teacher or something related to kids. And this is a pretty good assumption because, okay, first of all, this is not true right now. I'm not a teacher right now, but I used to be a teacher. So I taught English and Spanish in Czech Republic for some time. And yeah, I can tell you this one, this was one of the best jobs I've had in my life. It was really rewarding. I really liked working with people. And uh, one thing that I learned when I, was a teacher, when I was a teacher was that every student is different and every student learns in a different way. So it was really interesting and very rewarding to find the way that each student would uh, learn and what helped them. Uh, <laughs> what I learned when I was a teacher, I still apply here in Plants and Lucia. So sometimes I read your comments or your questions as if we were in a classroom and then you guys were asking me a question. Or for example, if you say that Sometimes some comments are like, okay, maybe you would uh, text, text here will be easier or can you please add some visuals here? And I really take that into account when I'm making the videos because it really feels like when I was preparing classes for my students, when I was a teacher before, now I'm preparing these videos and I really want to make them as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. So yeah, uh, that was a good assumption. I'm not a teacher anymore. But yeah, I used to be and I used to love it. <laughs> okay, so the next assumption was a very popular one and this one is related to language. So some of you assumed that I don't speak Spanish, some of you said that I do and I speak also French and other languages. So I'm just gonna put all of the assumptions here. And yeah, so let's clarify. My mother tongue is Spanish. So I do speak Spanish. I speak Spanish fluently. I come from Mexico and obviously I speak English. This is because my family and I moved to Canada when I was 15. So that's when we learned English. And this is why I also have an accent when I speak, uh, when I speak English. And I can tell you that when we moved to Canada, we had a rule in our household. So my parents told us that we had to speak Spanish in the house. And this was because they were afraid that we would uh, forget the language, which tends to happen when you are speaking only one language. The, lang the other language is still in your brain but you can forget some words and things like this. So I'm grateful that my parents had that rule because then we could just speak Spanish in the house and keep practicing that language and then outside of the household we would speak English. So yeah, those are my two main languages. Then we live in Germany so I can speak a little bit of German. I've been studying in Germany but it's a, it's a difficult language so I'm still learning. Um, but let me see, I can say something in German. Uh, jetzt lerne ich Deutsch, weil ich in Berlin wohne und es ist sehr richtig für mich. <laughs> okay, I still have a very strong accent, I think. The German speakers out there, <laughs> you can, I'm sorry, you can let me know. Uh, but yeah, I'm really trying to improve my German and I can tell you um, some tips that I use to learn uh, languages. So for example, one thing that I'm doing now is I'm listening to a podcast. Uh, this is a, a German podcast. I mean, it's a podcast to learn German and it is called Coffee Break German. And it's a very good podcast. They speak some English in the podcast, but then as you, as you progress, then the later episodes, uh, they speak more German. So it's really helpful. And if you're learning another language like Spanish, French, Italian, I think they have for all of those. So Coffee Break Spanish, Coffee Break uh, French and Coffee Break Italian. And they have other languages, I think, but I'm not sure. So uh, that's, that's one tip that I can give you. The second one is, I think I've said it before in this channel, we have vocabulary around the house. So we have stickers on different things in the house. And then these stickers are color coded. So this is to help us with, gen with gender because in German we have three genders. We have feminine, masculine, and neutral. Uh, if you speak Spanish, you know that we have feminine and masculine. So, but yeah, that, that has helped me a lot just to remember the genders of the different things that we have around the house. And what else? Yeah, you can also read books in the language. So I have some books in German. I would recommend if you're just starting, maybe getting books for kids uh, and this really helps you just get better with the vocabulary and just practicing the language and understanding. And you can also see some shows uh, on TV or some movies. 
Uh, I tend to, to watch comedies because these are really easy to understand and I always put a comedy that is in German and then with German subtitles. So this also helps you also practice the language. Okay, so the next assumption is all you do is water plants all day. And <laughs> okay, um, yes, I mean not every day because we don't want to overwater our plants. But um, yes, when I water my plants, I have a watering day. Most of the time now is Mondays. It used to be Saturdays, now I'm doing it Mondays. But yeah, so every Monday I check all of my plants and I separate the ones that need watering and then I filter the water to water my plants and then I water the plants and I clean the leaves. So this can take some hours, especially if you have many plants like us. So yeah, I would say that that assumption is correct, but not every day, just on watering day, yeah. It can be most of the day. And I would love to know how long you take to water. So how many plants do you have and how long does it take you to water? So just to see and also share our experiences. So also comment below, I would love to know about that. The next assumption is that I don't drink beer even when I live in Germany. And yes, to the beer lovers out there, I'm sorry, but yes, I don't drink beer. And I usually drink Rattler here in Germany if it comes to beer. And this is basically beer with lemonade. <laughs> so yeah, it's not completely beer, but it's a little bit of beer. Um, it can be a problem because I'm dating a Czech guy. Jan also doesn't drink so much beer, but in Czech Republic, beer is really big as well. I don't, you, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to the Czech Republic, beer is cheaper than water. And I'm not joking about this, this is literal. Like literally beer is cheaper than water. So, and it's a very big part, not only of German culture, but also of my partner's culture, which is the Czech culture. So yeah, but Unfortunately, I don't drink beer. Um, I can drink other kinds of alcohol like wine or other stuff or Beherovka, for example, from Czech Republic. But beer, no, not for me. <laughs> okay, another person said that I love to cook and this is a great assumption. I do love to cook. It's just like plant care. You take your time and learn a recipe and I really love it. I love to cook Mexican food, so here we make even our own tortillas. I love making my own salsas with different chiles. So I use guajillo or chile ancho or chile de arbol, of course. So yeah, we like to, to make our own salsas and our own Mexican food. And now I'm getting a, a lot into Indian food as well because I've I've noticed and if there are any Indian people out there watching this video, let me know what you think about this. But I've noticed that the spices in Indian food really calm me down. And also, for example, I love masala chai. Um, so that also calms me down. So I don't know if it's in my brain or if it's actually true. So if, you, if that's the experience with you, also let me know. But yes, um, <laughs> I do love to cook and if you if you know any vegetarian recipes or any vegan recipes that you love, please let me know in the comments below. And yeah, we will try them here. Okay, you guys, so this was the video on assumptions about me. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, thank you so much for sending your assumptions about me to me. <laughs> and yeah, I hope that you liked the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Okay, ciao. <laughs>